Eva Cassidy was a singer, a guitarist and a visual artist. During her lifetime, she was not that well known, but after her death in 1996, she suddenly became world famous and she sold millions of albums. Her life story started in Germany, where her mother Barbara grew up during the Second World War. This had not been an easy time for her and after the war, Barbara wanted just one thing, to leave Germany as soon as possible. Not far from her hometown Bad Kreuznach, Hugh Cassidy was stationed with the American army in the early 1960s. Hugh and Barbara met, they fell in love and they married. Hugh moved in with Barbara and her parents and while she was pregnant the couple left for America. They found a place to live in Washington DC where Eva was born in 1963. A few years later they moved to a small town called Bowie in the state of Maryland. Eva and her brother Dan were musical children. Father Hugh, who was a musician himself, saw this as an opportunity to become successful. He arranged some gigs for them as a trio. Dan played the violin, Eva sang and played the guitar, and Hugh played the bass guitar. After a while Eva and Dan joined their schoolmates and played in various bands, sometimes together, sometimes apart. Eva was considered to be a good singer, but because she was so shy, her stage presence left much to be desired. She used to stand as far back on the stage as possible, preferably in the dark. Chris Biondo played an important role in Eva Cassidy's music career. Chris had a studio in Rockville, north of Washington DC, where he recorded music of all kinds of local bands. When one of these bands had finished their recording, they all waited for the singer to do her part. It's always the same, Chris said. They all behave like divas. When Chris opened the back door, he suddenly discovered Eva, who had been too shy to ring the doorbell. As soon as Eva had sung her part, perfectly in one go, Chris realized how talented she was. Eva discovered her own strength. She preferred to sing in a studio rather than on stage. Chris Biondo was so impressed by her that he made dozens if not hundreds of recordings. He thought that Eva could improve her skills in entertaining the audience though. Chris and Eva started a love affair. They formed the Eva Cassidy Band, which included Ray's McLeod on drums, Keith Grimes on guitar, Chris Biondo on bass guitar and Lenny Williams on the piano. It was a great band and the boys did their utmost to make it comfortable for Eva. They firmly believed in the power of her voice and they knew that the record contract would only be a matter of time. Mick Fleetwood, the famous Fleetwood Mac drummer, had a music club called Fleetwoods in Alexandria near Washington DC in the 90s. He gave young bands the opportunity to play for an interested live audience. When Mick Fleetwood heard the Eva Cassidy band, he was surprised. He was convinced that if Eva Cassidy got a record deal, she could become very successful. He even offered to play the drum on her future album. Much to the annoyance of her band, Eva wasn't very keen on signing a contract. Blue Note president Bruce Lundfell traveled to Alexandria to decide whether she was good enough for his famous label. He showed her a contract, but when Eva Cassidy heard that Blue Note was a jazz label, she said, I don't want to limit myself to singing jazz only. Thanks, but no thanks. Chuck Brown was a celebrity in Washington DC in the 1990s. He was called the Godfather of Go-Go and he was a real entertainer on stage. In many ways he was Eva's counterpart. Chuck Brown was recording an album in Chris Biondo's studio when he heard Eva's voice for the first time and asked who is she. The two met and Chuck Brown and Eva Cassidy started performing together. They had a positive effect on each other and the two recorded an album The Other Side. It didn't sell as well as they had hoped. At the end of the day there was not enough time. At the age of 33, Eva Cassidy learned 
that the skin cancer from which she had previously suffered had spread to other organs. Despite chemotherapy, she only had a few months left to live. She died on 2 November 1996. Chris Biondo put a selection of her recordings on a CD and gave them to friends and family in memory of Eva. It seemed to be the end of the story. A few years later though, a small record company released a collection of Eva Cassidy recordings and called it Songbird. This album ended up on Terry Wogan's desk. Terry Wogan was one of the most influential BBC radio and television producers. He presented a popular music program on Sunday mornings. He played Eva's beautiful rendition of Over the Rainbow. When the song had finished and Terry Wogan had read the liner notes of the album, he found out that Eva Cassidy was no longer alive. This recording and the fact that she had died struck a chord with many people who had not heard such pure music for a long time. Many listeners called the BBC to ask who this singer was and why they didn't know her. Tony Bramwell, who had started his career as George Harrison's guitar case carrier and later became one of Britain's most successful record promoters, was asked to bring the Songbird album to the attention of radio makers. That's how Songbird had ended up on Terry Wogan's desk. It was a first step towards success, but Tony Bramwell wanted more. He also had a videotape of one of Eva Cassidy's performances at Blues Alley. Tony Bramwell tried to convince the makers of the popular television show Top of the Pops, if you want to reach a large audience, you simply need TV. Top of the Pops, however, had the policy that they only showed live music, which wasn't possible, of course. What made it worse was that the quality of the video recording was rather poor and the song lasted longer than five minutes. Tony Bramwell assured the program makers that the viewers would not switch off. If they would show the clip at the end of the broadcast, only a handful of viewers might drop out. But the opposite happened. After broadcasting it, the top of the pop's telephone kept on ringing for hours and hours. Everybody wanted to know who was this unknown singer who performed such a beautiful arrangement of Over the Rainbow so purely on her own and where could they buy her album? Songbird entered the album charts, reached to the number one position and eventually in 2000 became the best selling album in the UK. For many people Songbird was their first introduction to Eva Cassidy. The first track is Fields of Gold, a Sting classic. Other memorable tunes are Autumn Leaves, Wayfaring Stranger and of course Over the Rainbow. Eva sings in a multitude of styles ranging from jazz, blues, folk to gospel and people were relieved that they could finally enjoy real music again. So Where the clouds are falling 